السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والجنة للموحدين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم وعلينا معهم أجمعين أما بعد فيا أيها الناس يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والعاملين والحمد لله والحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator our sustainer our provider our cherisher and the greatest of salutation in abundance upon his mawlad our master and master of both the worlds Sayyidina wa Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam upon his noble purified household the Ahlul Bayt alayhim wa salatu wa salam and upon his noble and illustrious of companions the Sahaba Hikiram Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhi majma'in Indeed we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be gathered here on this blessed day of Yawm al-Jum'ah to glorify him subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our presence, our dua, our supplication Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on our souls Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best of this world and of the year after Ameen Ya Rabbana Ya Rabbal Alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my respected elders says in the Quran before Surah Nisa he concludes Surah Ali Imran by saying subhanahu wa ta'ala يا أيها الذين آمنوا صبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says O you who believe, O you who profess to have iman and conviction, be patient, persevere, and endure, and hold firmly and be steadfast on your station and do not divert. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be conscious of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may receive and be successful. Now, Iman, we as Muslims think that we understand its definition, its tarif, its concept. But Iman is a very broad and comprehensive concept. What we have and what we think we understand of Iman is very little. It's not very uh, 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 comprehensive or very broad in its understanding of what the true understanding of Iman truly is. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Iman wa bid'un wa sab'un wa shu'ba a'alaha wa awlaha la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah wa adnaha imatatul adha ala al-tariq wa kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Iman has more than 73 components. The hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Iman has more than 73 components. The highest, the greatest component is the shahada and testification of faith. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to believe in the wahdaniyah of Allah to believe in the nubuwa and prophethood of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is the first component and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says wa'adnaha the least component or the smallest component of iman imatatul adha anit tariq 
that to remove any object from the road or from the pathway that may cause harm to another human being. For example, if there's a stone or there's a thorn or if there's a brick on the road and that's a path people walk on, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa to remove that object from the pathway of people is a component of Iman. This is how broad the concept and how comprehensive the understanding of Iman is in the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. But we will concentrate on four of the greatest components of Iman. That is, At-Tawakkul ala Allah wal-istislam li amrihi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa li sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-qada bi qada'ihi wa shukra li ni'amihi wa taqwa Four of the greatest components of Iman, the first, Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he gives an explanation in the hadith is At-Tawakkul ala Allah Reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To rely completely and only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to rely on mankind or human beings. To put your full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To have conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what happens to you. We see in Palestine today, our brothers and sisters are losing their family. Families are being annihilated wiped out from the face of the earth. Entire lineage, generations are being killed, persecuted, wiped out with no trace. We see people's homes being bombarded. People that have spent their entire life to earn a living, to buy a home, to put a shelter over their heads. Their entire uh, 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 home, their comfort, their protection is annihilated, destroyed. They have no place to sleep. They have no shelter, no blanket. We see children, siblings. We see young, young boys and girls being killed. We see a people that has, haven't got any food. They have been starved in starvation. No warmth, no electricity, no sewage system. But if you look at every single one of those videos, even when they state of crying, and melancholy, what do they say? Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. All is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, as long as Allah is happy with us, we have no fear. We see an entire community. Why? This is what happens when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the hadith of the people of Palestine and the people of Aqsa and Quds. لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق There will always be a portion of my ummah that will continuously fight for truth. And the enemies will not divert them or sway them from believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will fight until the day of Qiyamah. How true it is. We see it in our brothers and sisters, a true component of Iman. Because today we in South Africa, and myself included, when anything befalls us, if anything befell us, and we are tested with our wealth, or we are tested with our children, or we are tested uh, 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 with our health. We as a ummah and as weak as we are, we question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing this to me? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testing me? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facing these trials and tribulations upon me and upon my family? But our lives are not being treated in that manner that our brothers and sisters are being faced on, on a daily basis in Palestine. And throughout the world where Muslims are being persecuted. Where entire generations and are being wiped out, erased from history. Where children's heads are being severed and blown up. But what happens when that happens to them? Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepted my son as a shaheed. Praise to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepted my daughter and my wife as one of the martyrs. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given me life for another day to fight in his path. This is the first and the greatest component of Iman, to put your soul trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where in the world you see children throwing stones and rocks against tanks, missiles, AK-47s, artillery. Why? Because they know that with a small rock, it can create damage 
on a huge scale if they rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a lesson for us to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to worship him because we have favors and blessings and wealth and health, but rather worship him for his sake. Put our entire reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we look at, for example, in the time of, 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 uh, of Mecca, if you look at what is happening today, we see on a greater scale what happened to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Quraysh, when the leaders of Mecca wanted to stop the message of Islam and wanted to annihilate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they began a series of campaigns. The first campaign they began was a campaign of persecution, aggression, torture, cruelty on an unparalleled level ever to be seen in the history of mankind. They began first with the campaign of terror, a campaign of repression, a campaign of torture. To such an extent that Khabbab bin Arat radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda was being dragged on hot boiling coal where he was placed on burning coal where he could smell his own flesh being burnt. Where we see Sayyidina Bilal Allah ta'ala wajahul kareem being put upon his belly a big boulder on the scorching sands of Makkah. We see Subayya ibn Khayyat radiallahu ta'ala wa ardaha where a spear was thrust through her pelvis. We see torture, cruelty, oppression, repression. We see a behavior never seen before in, in mankind meted out to individuals simply because they say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the cry of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala when Umayyah bin Khalaf la'anatullahi ta'ala alayhi was persecuting him? Ahadun ahad. Allah is one. Allah is one. When Sayyidina Sumayya ibn Khayyat radiallahu ta'ala anha was being tortured and threatened with a spear to be thrown into her privates, her pelvis, she never turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she had tawakkul, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever is happening to me today, Allah ta'ala is aware of it. And as the Quran says, the verse which I have quoted, O you who believe, persevere and endure. The ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will always have patience and will always need to persevere and endure. Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasiban nasu ayyutraku ayyakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Does mankind say and believe that just because they say we believe in Allah, they won't be tested? Indeed, we tested those before them and we will test those after them. Iman is a trial and tribulation. It's something that needs to be earned. We have got it on a silver platter. We don't appreciate it. Rasulullah, the first campaign of the, of the mushrikeen was a campaign of utter, utter terror. Even people that had social standing like Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was beaten unconsciously by the Kuffar and Quraysh of Makkah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself was tortured, strangled, by Ibn Abi Mu'ayt, la'anatullahi alayhi. He was being strangled. Abu Jahl, la'anatullahi alayhi, placed the intestines of a camel upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The son of Abu Lahab spat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was beaten. The Muslims in the early phases of Islam, Allah ta'ala said, oh you who believe, be persevere and endure. Allah and be aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may receive success. The first campaign was a campaign of utter, utter on a, on a great level of cruelty, terror, terrorism, what you may call it today. But how did they face it? They faced it with perseverance, patience, endurance, tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had their trust and faith and conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What not is our brothers and sisters being meted out in Palestine today? On an unparalleled level in, and the world is watching children, women being killed. We find homes being demolished. We find ethnic cleansing, genocide. An entire Islamic world, 1.5 billion, cannot lift a finger. But 
still the people of Palestine endure. They persevere. Why? That is a characteristic of Iman. And ask ourselves, myself included first, Allah, I don't think I'll survive that. If I have to go live there or be part of that community, and Allah grant me shahada and grant me Iman and strengthen my faith first. But if we had to go there, we'll be able to, to maintain, we'll be able to persevere under those conditions. And we ask ourselves, is our Iman on that level? Is our patience and tawakkul and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that maqam and that station on that rank? Then your second component of Iman, one of the greatest components of Iman, al-istislam li amrihi, to submit in totality, to submit in totality to the command and to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. It's a component of faith. It's a component of conviction. In belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to completely surrender in totality, not partial submission, total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give everything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he was holding his son Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam when the angel of death was taking his ruh away when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa teared until his mubarak beard was soaked in tears what did he say? Inna hadhi al-quloob wa inna hadhi al-uyun la tadma' wa hadhi al-quyub la tahzan walakin la naqulu illa ma yarda rabbuna these eyes of ours will shed rivers of tears these hearts of ours will be fragmented into pieces but we as Muslims will not utter a statement except that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see a father who lost his son, he says, why are you crying? My son is a shaheed. I should be proud of him. He gave his life in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the people of Palestine are people of faith people of hikmah, people of conviction, people of iman. The entire world can be against them. No aid and assistance is coming to them. But what? Our trust in Allah, our surrender is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb. We don't need the aid of the Islamic countries. We don't need the assistance of the West. We have complete trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we submit that today a person loses an entire family, tomorrow he still goes out in the battle, in the front line. Why? It concerns Majid al-Aqsa, it concerns truth, it concerns justice, it concerns the life of a fellow neighbor, of a brother and community and society that needs to stand up. We say we don't worry if there's no food, we'll survive on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you talk about courage, this is what it means to be a Muslim. And that is why, what it was in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We see the second campaign of the Quraysh. The second campaign was the campaign of boycott. Social and economic boycott. Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Quraysh saw, they could not stop his message. When the Quraysh saw, they could not deter him. When the Quraysh failed, in bribing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or tempting him by giving him the doors of women are for you, treasures for you, kingship for you, monarchy for you, the wealth of the entire Arab will be at your feet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not compromise. He was not a moderate Muslim. He was the most beloved, utter, total conviction in Allah, total belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no compromise. When they threatened him with social and economic boycott, when the Quraysh and Bani Hashim were boycotted and sent outside Makkah for how many years? A period of three years. No one could intermarry into the clan. No one could feed them. No one could send them food. No one could help them. No one can assist them. No one can aid them. They cannot enter back into Makkah. For three years, Rasulullah and his family and his clan of the Bani Hashim ate the dry leaves from the barks of trees. Three years. They never had food. Children went to sleep every night crying. People passed away. 
out of total poverty and hunger. Total social economic boycott. People couldn't come and visit them, come to their assistance. We see a reflection of that, that, that campaign of social economic boycott. We see it today where people are being cut off petrol, electricity, water, food, medical aid, humanitarian assistance cannot come into Gaza. Be it few weeks and months, we see they are cut off from the entire world where Islamic countries, Jordan, Syria, Egypt, Lebanon, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. Iran to some extent is helping. To some extent they are helping. Where is the rest of the Islamic states, Islamic countries? Surrounded by Muslims, social, economic boycott. How do Rasulullah have some patience, perseverance, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it into the hearts of not Muslims. He put it into the hearts of kafirs to have some sorrow, sadness, some form of rahmah and mercy that what is happening to our community, our society, to other human beings, they went and stood their ground against Abu Jahl, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Utbah, and they cancelled the economic and social boycott. Where the treaty was stuck into the Kaaba, and when it went into the Kaaba, the entire scroll was eaten by insects except the word Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That is why today we look who is standing for the Muslims. You see the, the Christians and the Jews and the non Muslims of Europe, of Africa, <coughs> of Asia, standing and walking alongside Muslims, marching to the embassies. We see generations of people, we see a community that may not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have humanity. Where is our humanity as Muslims? Where is our humanity? Where is our love and affection and empathy for our brothers and sisters in Palestine? Do we make dua for them? Do we wake up and read Quran on their behalf? If we cannot help them financially, if we cannot help them physically, are we help them in the, in the form of dua and supplication and Quran? Are we helping them by strengthening our own family? Therefore, the co community and society will become strengthened. Where is that? The third concept or component of Iman is al rida bi qadaihi to be happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a smile. Never to complain. To be content with all the hukum and the decree and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah was thrown out of Taif where the children and the, 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 the madmen and the, were chasing and throwing rocks at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, chasing him out of Taif when he sought shelter under the, 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 the tree. What did he say? What dua did he make? We spoke about this dua. Allahumma anta rabbi wa rabbul mustad'afeen. Famous dua, a dua that if you read, oh Allah, you are my Rabb and the Rabb of all those who are weak. He says, Allah, who do you leave my affairs to? To a hostile enemy? Or to my own people that will flick uh, torture upon me? Allah, Ya Rabb, as long as you are not angry with me, I am not worried what is happening to me. I am content. I am happy with everything that is happening to me as long as you are not displeased with me. Ya Allah, walakin afiyatuka usa'uli, but Allah, I, your, your, your rahmah and your mercy and your assistance will be more welcome by me, more, greater and more beneficial to me. This is the iman that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa thought his companions, thought his family, thought the Muslims of Makkah, they'll always be content, be happy. What did the Sahabi, Zayd ibn Dathina radiallahu ta'ala an, when his master took him on the outskirts of Makkah, put him on a, on a cross, and started to beat him, beat him, broke his legs, tortured him, poking him with a dagger. What did he say to him? He says, don't you wish now that your place was switched with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, that he be in your position when you are at home with your family? He says, I do not wish wherever my beloved is for a thorn to prick him in exchange for him to come here. I am content with my punishment. I am content with my torture. Because I am pleased with Allah and His Rasul. Raditu billahi rabba. When they made that dua, Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami deena, 
Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam nabi wa rasulah we are content we are pleased with Allah as our rabb with Islam as our deen and with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as our as our messenger this is rida we see today our brothers and sisters they are content they have they're not complaining about food they're not complaining about the state they are living in as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the will of Allah if Allah wills us for us to be in this position we are content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is iman and the last or the, the fourth component one very strong component of iman as shukru li ni'amihi wa taqwa to always be grateful for the numerous blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we are not in that battlefield how many of us are appreciative of the numerous blessings that Allah gives us on a daily on a daily basis we have food on our table we have water that we can drink we can go into a bath bathroom and have a shower we can feed our children we have medical needs that we can go to a hospital or a clinic or a doctor we can stand together go on a car and go wherever we want to go and enjoy our lives but are we grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are we grateful are we are we shukr are we uh, uh, do we show gratitude to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sabiru be patient and endure wa sabiru wa rabitu and be firm in your station be thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every every state that you are in whether in good times whether in bad times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last one before i conclude we see today the third campaign in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wasallam is a campaign of propaganda we see throughout the western world israel has a right to defend itself israel is the victim and muslims are the uh, aggressors we see this propaganda bbc cnn we see the entire world the meccans did that themselves how did they portray rasulullah when the quraysh came into makkah what did they say rasulullah is a madman he's a poet he's a soothsayer he's a magician right they went out in every group of of pilgrims that came to makkah and they started to talk bad about rasulullah lies upon lies uh, to try to distort the perception of islam speaking ill insulting him creating and distorting the image of islam to the people of Makkah to the people of the Arabian Peninsula that go and say this is Muhammad this is what he's doing he's a liar he's a soothsayer he's a magician he's a poet he's a fortune teller the war of propaganda what you see today israel is the victim israel is the 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 the, the people that is under threat <coughs> but alhamdulillah through all that lies throughout that all that deception manipulation of the media the truth is still coming out if every muslim does they but when you have a video share it <coughs> speak about it in your workplace don't feel shy if you have non muslims that are pro israeli or pro zionist sit down talk to them debate to them don't get angry debate to them calm in a collective manner pass the message of islam pass the message of truth circulate what is happening and counter the narrative of the west counter the propaganda and you find slowly slowly and no small deed is a small deed indeed every small deed helps the muslim ummah this is how we can we and spread the truth what is happening how we can assist how can we come to the aid of our brothers and sisters in palestine by dua by supplication by talking about it speaking to our children of the history of palestine the station and sanctity of masjid al aqsa teach our children so that history that legacy that sanctity is not lost because the west is throwing television netflix social media they're throwing it down in front of you where you can't escape it <coughs> so why your heart turns away from allah your heart turns away from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our brothers and sisters victory in palestine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them ease allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease in the difficulty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the shuhada the highest maqam in jannah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa to the sick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our resolve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant victory to the muslims throughout the world wa ma alayna illa al balagh wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim alhamdulillah mashallah that was our mufti Muhammad Farooq Sufi may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and reward him ameen 
Alhamdulillah, today's Jummah is dedicated to Hazrat Khwaja Khwaja Gan, Khwaja Nizamuddin Mahbub Ilahi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, the Murid and Khalifa Hazrat Khwaja Khwaja Gan, Khwaja Baba Fariduddin Gandhi Shakar Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and Peer Bai of Hazrat Khwaja Khwaja Gan, Khwaja Lawuddin Sabit Kalyari Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and to all our brave brothers and sisters in Palestine, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory over the oppressors. Ameen. We would also like to welcome our brothers and sisters who have returned from the blessed lands of Iraq. The Habibia Sufi Astana Peter Marisburg invites one and all to the annual Uru Sharif. Inshallah, this will take place on the 5th of November, this Sunday, 2023, commencing at 9 a.m. Kindly see notice board for further details. Dua Shifa is requested for Muhammad Rasul, Ayyub Hussain, Jamil Muhammad, Muhammad Imran Qasimji, Aziz Amir Muhammad, and Sadiq Sayyid Ahmad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a full and complete Shifa. Dua Mafira is requested for Haji Ahmad Ismail. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a high abode in Jannah. Today's lunch, Alhamdulillah, is sponsored by Mosi Nizami for the Isale Sawab for Khaja Khaja Gan, Khaja Nizamuddin, Mehbube Ilahi, Rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali. Once again, brothers in Islam, we do apologize for the extensive renovations that are currently taking place in and around the Darbar. Kindly please bear with us. We humbly ask all brothers to be patient during this period. Jazakallah khairul jazak. Kindly. Let's come forward. Let's come forward. Oh, brothers, fill please kindly fill the masjid from the front. Fill the masjid upstairs as well from the front. Jazakallah khairul jazak. Should I pull, fill the masjid up from the front? Shall I be trying to read the masjid inside, inshallah? Brothers, don't feel shy. Fill the sufu from the front so that we may know the brothers at the back can come down as well. Fill the masjid up to capacity, inshallah, first. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والجنة للموحدين ولا عضوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم وعلينا معهم أجمعين أما بعد فيا أيها الناس يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم كتابه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لألكم تفلحون وقال سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أفضل الجهاد كلمة الحق عند السلطان جائر أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام باللفظه صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الحبيب الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والعاملين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين
الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جهد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر الله مصل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مصابه الغرر إباد الله اتقوا الله تعالى من سماء اللغ فضول الخبر وانتهوا أما نهاكم عنه وزجر واعلموا أن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكة الله المسبحة لقدسه وثلس بكم أيها المؤمنون من برية جنه وإنس فقال تعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما لبيك اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم وصلى الله تعالى على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وملائكه الله المقربين وعلى خلفائه الراشدين خصوصا على اولهم بالتصديق وافضلهم بالتحقيق المولى الامام الصديق امير المؤمنين سيدنا ابي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى زاهد الاواب الناطق بالصواب امير المؤمنين سيدنا ابي حفظ عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى جامه القران كامل الحياه والايمان امير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى اسد الله الغالب امام المشارك والمغارب امير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى ولديه السيدين ابي محمد الحسن رضي الله تعالى عنه وابي عبد الله الحسين رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى امهما فاطمه الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلى تمام العشره المبشره صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اللهم اهلك الكفره والمبتدعه والمشركين اللهم شت شملهم اللهم مزق جمعهم اللهم دمر ديارهم اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعل اللهم آمنة متمعنة سائر بلدان المسلمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في فلسطين على اليهود الغاصمين اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في غزة وفي فلسطين عامة اللهم كن لهم معينا ونصيرا اللهم ثبت أقدامهم اللهم اجمع كلمتهم اللهم وهد سهامهم اللهم سدد سهامهم اللهم سدد رأيهم اللهم ارموتاهم اللهم شي مرضاهم اللهم آمن روعهم اللهم عليك بعدوهم وعدوك يا الله يا قوي يا عزيز برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله يعمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يئذكم لعلكم تذكرون واذكروا الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى على وعولا وعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيموا للصلاة إن شاء الله إن السكن ركات أفتر